I actually ended up working with the landlord to do this. This is the driveway through the woods that leads up to our site. It's not where our main driveway is going to be. It's just a driveway that makes it so that we can bring the truck up when we need to. But the pain in the butt part has been is that we actually come through one of their horse fields out here. Or, not really a field, but horse paddocks. <laughs> paddock, I guess. Just very large paddock. And uh, they've just got this electric fence up, so we just have to shut the fence off, take it down, drive over it, that kind of thing. So we put in this gate. We just have to bring the electric fence to the gate and around it, obviously, so that you're still not going through it. And um, all we did was we put it in this tree over here, which should be okay, because even though we drilled holes into it, they're plugged holes, obviously, because they have the hinges in them. So it shouldn't do any damage to the tree. And then on the other side, we used a 4x4, four four, but there's a nifty little tool. I'm not really sure what these are called. But this goes right over the 2x4. All you have to do is loosen it by these bolts over here to be able to fit the 2x4, and then you tighten it up as much as you can. And then it's got probably about a 2, 2.5 foot spike off the bottom here which goes into the ground and that's the only thing I want to do is I want to get this a little deeper and it's just got to get banged down. I got to bring a ladder out so that I can get to the top of the 4x4 with the sledgehammer and just bang it down a little bit. Luckily this ground is workable but it is holding it mostly in place. It's not really going anywhere. It's got a little bit of play but not enough to worry about. And then I've got to get a little bit longer of a chain to actually fit around here. And what worked out perfectly which we didn't even mean to do is that when we open it it meets up with the sapling here perfectly so we can chain it around it to hold the gate open if we need to hold it open in the wind or something to that effect, which is really nice. So I'm pretty excited about it. We were making jokes yesterday that uh, I was all pumped. I'm like, I always wanted a gated driveway. And then the landlord started joking that uh, we live in a gated community. I'm like, yep, gated community, house on the highest hill in the place. So it's pretty exciting though. I'm excited about this fence, or this gate. It's going to make it a lot easier for getting up and down than dealing with this electric fence. So I did a little shopping and picked up a couple things that I'm not able to get for free. Like trim for around the floors. You guys probably saw me putting the floors in the other day. And the problem with campers is, at least that camper, not a damn thing in it is square at all. Even the tub to the walls isn't square. The bed to the walls isn't square. So you end up with gaps around the edges that I don't want dirt or moisture getting trapped in that's going to create mold or an unhealthy living space. So I did invest in some trim. And I actually came down to the landlord's house with it all. I measured it, planned it out, brought all the pieces down, and I'm cutting it down here with the chop saw. Because if anybody hasn't used a chop saw before, this is a chop saw. What are nice about these is that you can just untwist right here and move the whole blade around to get whatever angle you want. And you do want those really nice 45 degree angles so that the trim matches up nicely in the corners and you have nice smooth seams. And uh, if you guys ever do this, I did it the hard way. It was just a stupid mistake. Luckily, I caught it right away. Just um, when you're cutting your angles, when I originally did it, I just kind of laid it down like I was cutting a straight piece and did my angle. And you really got to make sure that you stand it up the way it's going to be standing in when it gets installed, excuse me, so that you have the correct angle. So don't do what I did on my first piece, but luckily I was able to reuse and salvage the piece and just make sure it's set for those angles, how it's going to be set when you lay it in. So I finally finished getting all the trim down and I'm going to put down for now around the camper. There's a couple of pieces I have to wait to do until other projects finish. This has definitely been the most frustrating project I've done since I've started this place. Uh, between nothing being square and then these flimsy walls that they don't look like it but they curve in a little bit and curve out a little bit. And I've got areas where the wall is just really screwed up and not really fixable unless I take the wall down like here um and then that and then just that we don't have power up here yet so I was using the chop saw for the 45s and having to go up and down and remeasure bring it down cut it bring it up make sure it fits it was uh extremely frustrating but I'm glad that I'm done with it now doesn't look terrible uh, with the way it went, I kind of regret it. I should just, uh, my original plan was I was thinking about just putting a silicone bead around all the cracks and edges, but that kind of looks like hell, so I wanted to make it look a little nicer, and it didn't end up really being worth it for how it came out, but 
better than nothing style that I got. It's just a normal rounded over. It wasn't bad. I did get that from uh, Home Depot. They can get pricey depending on what you get. The kinds that I got, they were only about eight bucks a stick, and each stick is 94 inches. So it wasn't terrible cost-wise, but I'm still looking back and saying, you know what, I should have not spent the money and just, you know, dealt with it just having silicone around the edge. But like I said, that's okay. So I'm going to start working on that, and then I've got another project plan for the day, and I'll show you when we come to it. So what I'm working on here, I know it looks a little awkward at first, but this actually used to be a closet right here, what we're looking at. And uh, at home, I have a beautiful cockatiel that has a color mutation. If you want to see him, I did uh, introduce him in my Doing Laundry by Hand video. But what we did was we took the door off the closet, and then we cut another window in the other side of the closet, and the couch is right behind me, so it gives us a nice view. I am going to fill all this in here, and we're going to put a nice window trim around it that's actually going to hold the caging itself in. And the door will be on this side, and this is going to be his cage. But what I'm doing right now is I'm putting a linoleum floor down in the bottom to make it nice and easy to clean so I can scrub it and all that. I don't want wood getting moldy or anything like that. And it's the same type of flooring that we put on the actual floor, just a different color. And so I figured I'll show you guys how we do this, but the first thing I have to do is measure my next piece nice and square the best that I can. When you are um, measuring, it's hard because if I grab a piece here, it comes just like that in a square, and you just peel the back off of it, and it's sticky. But So you're going to do your line and your writing and your first cut on the back. A thing a lot of people make a mistake when they're doing their floor. So you want to make sure to pay attention to your pattern, and pay attention to which side you're measuring from when you flip it over. Don't flip it over and measure from there, because you're going to have the wrong cut piece to actually match up with the pattern that you're doing. So I'm going to go ahead and measure it, and then I'll show you how you cut it. Alright, so when I measured this, I made sure I had my correct side to follow my pattern. And you always, just like when you measure anything else that you want straight, you want two lines to follow across so you don't end up at an angle. And especially if you're working with something like this camper, which is n mostly not square, <laughs> I'm making sure to double measure both sides to make sure in case the piece has to be a little bit angled that it's going to fit. So what I'm going to do is you're going to need a razor blade and a straight edge. So I'm using my level here as my straight edge. Get you where you can see here. I'm going to line it right up to both of my lines. Make sure we're nice and even. Really take your time with it because you don't want to waste this stuff. And then uh, you're going to want to use a razor blade. I'm using a knife because I don't have a razor blade on me and luckily my knife is sharp enough. You want to hold it down on a nice flat surface, really hold your straight edge down nice and tight. And I'm just going to take my blade, and usually about three times is enough. And I'm just going to run it right along that edge. Make sure you really hold tight because you don't want it to move while you're doing this. Just about three times. Just like that. Remove your straight edge. I can get this so that you can see. You want to. When you break it, you want to make sure to hold your whole piece. Don't just hold along the crack. Hold the whole piece. And you're going to bend away from the back. So you're going to bend it towards the inside. You can see, and it'll eventually pop. Oh, come on, did I not get through enough? There we go. And then it'll pop right in half like that. Now don't just try to tear this because this your pattern will actually come off if you just tear it. So what I'm going to do... Sorry, this isn't the best angle here, guys. Is I'm going to hold that so that it's folded. And I'm going to take my knife and very, very gently, it doesn't take a lot, just run it along the inside of that groove. It being folded is pretty much acting like your straight edge. And just very lightly run it across once or twice. I'm actually going to use the tip of my blade here. Just gonna run it right across. There we go. And then go ahead and bend it back the opposite way, nice and gently. If it doesn't want to go for you right off the bat, then run your knife along it again. And now I've got the nice piece that I need. And we'll bring that back inside. Now I'm just gonna peel the back right off of it. It's really easy to come off. Just 
close right off. And we'll dispose of that. All right, and then we're going to put it into place. This stuff is very sticky, so you want to get it nice and lined up before you actually press it down. Again, make sure that your pattern is lined up the way you want. I usually stand it on end up against the other tile to make sure you have a good seam. Okay, there's nothing underneath that's going to block me. And always make sure your floor is nice and clean. And I'll start from there and then just slide it down in. See what I mean? <laughs> and then press it down as well as you can once you get it into your spot. And as you can see, I've got a nice clean seam between the tiles. And that's one that I already did. That's your seam. You can barely tell it's there. Nice and close around the edges. So I'm going to keep going on this and do the whole floor. And if I have enough tile, I'll show you guys, but I do want to try to come up around the edges just a little bit if I can to make it like a bowl. So a good portion of today is all about nail pulling. See how many I've gotten so far. Still have a ton to go. That's one thing about free wood is it's free. But you got to pull all the nails and staples and all that stuff out. But today, we did head over to Sleepy's because the mattress in here was not in good shape. This camper had a family living in it for a while, and then it sat for a long time, so it wasn't in the best shape. So we did get a new mattress. It's still got the plastic on it because we're going to leave it on it until we move in because we are still having a mouse problem that I want to deal with. And uh, so it's super comfy, and it's nice. They're having a sale, so we got it pretty cheap. We got it with two pillows, which they've got to give us. We have to go back and get it for uh, $328. So that wasn't bad at all because it was a half-price sale for uh, Good Friday coming up. And it fit in here perfectly. It's a lot taller than the other mattress. And I kind of like that because you can sit and let your feet dangle off the edge of the bed. So Chris has been working on this pretty cool project for one of our nephews. He's trying to make him a sword out of cedar. So it's coming out pretty good. I like the red finish, so I'm probably going to stain it and bring out that red and keep it good. i got to get a file and clean up the uh, grip and stuff. I want to clean that all out and make that nice. And Just trying to straighten it out. It's getting pretty straight so far. The draw knife's been doing a pretty good job. Did the mill main uh, milling of the wood with an axe, so sitting by the campfire having a fun time. So it's been a fun project. I'm going to make two of them, so hopefully I can bang these out by Christmas. <laughs> yeah. And that's a legitimate antique draw knife. Which is working pretty well. Oh yeah, I put a nice edge on it. And i got to be careful not to take too much wood out. It's nice and sharp, so it's been working really good. These knots are the only things that give me a problem. I think I could have used a bigger piece of cedar, but we'll see how the next one goes. I'm learning. Fun thing to do while you're just sitting around outside. And then what he's got it hooked up to, we actually picked this up yeah. from his work the <laughs> other day. He's playing with this. Is. Yeah, this is a big crate. Oops, sorry about the sun. Ooh, I gotta move. Sorry, guys. But it's a crate that he got from work. The big glass windows came in, I guess. Yeah. And our idea for it is we may have to make it a little wider. We're going to see which stove we're going to use. But um, we are going to line this with cement board. cement board. Sorry, I couldn't remember the word for it. So that it's nice and fireproof. On the inside. And then, you know, we'll put some siding and stuff on the outside. Put a roof on it. And then we want to do a little hole in the top for ductwork into our camper. So the natural hot air that flows up and fills up this space should hopefully just naturally flow into the camper otherwise I can hook up I've got some uh, 12 volt electric fans from a uh, uh, power supply unit so if all this fails we'll just electronically blow with very minimal power and 12 volt but hopefully it'll work out good like she said we might have to bring it out a little bit but yeah. pre-made box 
free wood. Yeah. As always, so. And we have a couple options for wood stoves to put in there, so we're going to measure the different ones and see what's going to work best. It'll be really nice because the campers go up pretty easy, so it'll make it so that we can use the wood stove and still burn and do it that way, but not have to worry about the camper burning out. If it burns, it's just going to burn the little shed and not the camera. It shouldn't burn anyways, but... And it would be nice in the future. I've seen people do it with, you can use this for your hot water, too. We can put some kind of hot water tank above it you know keep that warm so we'll see what other options we can explore in the future with it yes yeah, so you guys will see all that coming up we'll obviously show you when we do it and what our decisions are yeah. and if it works and if all else fails hopefully we have enough solar power to just plug it in a heater but it'd be nice to try on wood we like having our wood so so we're taking the old nasty awning off the roof stuff's up there cranking away Because we're going to build the porch, so we're going to have our own roof over it, and this thing's all old and deteriorated. The other side was already stripped out and fallen off, and the top's all rotted, so. Yeah, so, getting ready for the new porch. Just got to go down and make some cuts and get some electricity. So, load it up. So yeah, so we got the awning down, we ripped it all off, and now we've got to get it to the dump or something, because it's all over the place. And poor Christopher, as he was pulling it down, it pinched his finger in between the two slots there, and we got it all... In between around. the rails, so it closed and slid on it, so... Pretty much took the top of my finger off. <laughs> yeah, so we got it all covered up now. That was an unpleasant experience. Stuck it back okay. in place, so hopefully it stays on there. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> Just keep a lot of pressure on it. Maybe it'll heal. Put some liquid band-aid on it when we get home and whatnot. So, and cleaned it all up. Luckily, this is aluminum, so it doesn't rust. So we're not worried about tetanus, but it was dirty. So we cleaned it. But otherwise, we got it off. And the truck battery had died. But now we're getting a jump from somebody to know that somebody's here. So we're finally going to bring that wood down to cut it. So that'll be good. And then again, I just gotta figure out what to do with this massive mess now. So we cut all the pieces and just laid them out. This isn't at all what it's gonna look like, because uh, all those are gonna be standing upwards. And then you got the frame, which is also gonna stand up around, and we gotta add a couple more boards here. And we have to do all the leveling and everything else. That's just them cut, but it kind of gives you an idea of what the deck is gonna be like when it's actually put together. A few more blocks. Yeah, a few more blocks and whatnot. Definitely lots of leveling to do. Yeah, all that good stuff. out through the campers. Yeah. So. And then actually, you know, screwing them all together properly and whatnot. But just to give me an idea.